Hello, Substance Designer users. This is Laura Gallagher, and I have a PSA today. And this video is probably not relevant to you unless you are a user of the processor nodes, pixel processor, value processor. It's a fairly technical video, so if you're part of that audience, I think you know who you are. So basically, I stumbled upon a bug that is, uh, in a way, a perfect storm. So hopefully, this is something that you can avoid yourself after you have watched this video in the future. So I'll just explain what is going on first, and I'll actually do a demonstration of the bug, and then I will share other findings as it relates to that. It's going to be very surprising, I promise you. If you look at the graph that I have right here, it's not a very complex graph, of course, I'm within a pixel processor, and we can read and traverse this graph together. You'll see it's actually very simple. So we start our root is a sequence node. So out of that, our last node that is connected is a get float for with the output variable. So basically, this will output whatever the output variable is. So of course, the pins, we follow the top pins always. They're always the things that are calculated first, of course. So this brings us to the stack that is right here, where our first line of code, we basically set the output value to be pure black. We set a Boolean that is named test to the value true. And finally, the third line of code, where we get that particular Boolean, if it is true, we will set the output variable to red. If it is false, we set the output variable to blue. If your guess, looking at all this graph, is that the output to the graph, or the value of the output variable, should be red, you are wrong. <laughs> so the output actually is not red, as we would probably expect looking at this graph. The output is blue, and that is interesting. Now, this is really a perfect storm of uh, different things coming together, as I have said. So for one, if you are curious, if I actually not have my Boolean here as an actual variable, but if I simply copy the true value and plug it within my if-else statement, suddenly we are outputting red. So that is very interesting, first of all. Now, I do promise you that the value of this Boolean is indeed true, because if I go ahead here and I get my test Boolean here, and I convert it to a float, and I output that, you can see that our value is 1. So it's not a case of the Boolean value somehow being false. That's not actually what is going on. What I think is happening is that because the if-else statement is outputting a vector value as opposed to a scalar value, it is actually calculating all the branches that are plugged into it. And it first calculates the if statement, and then afterward it calculates the else statement. So if you think this is weird enough, it actually gets a lot weirder than that. And by the way, this file is a file that I'm distributing to like everyone. There should be a link somewhere that you can access this file if ever you want to check this out. Or perhaps you work for Adobe miraculously and you actually want to log this as a bug or like try to troubleshoot this. That would be great. The things actually get a lot weirder than the this, okay? So, so here's a more complex version of the exact same graph. But in this case, uh, I have uh, another variable here that is uh, set here. And this is the count variable. So this is basically just um, a variable that I am incrementing by one in different places within this particular graph with the goal to simply track how many times it gets counted, basically, right? But this is pretty much exactly the same graph. It's just that now I have added a bunch of set notes here with the count value that is right here. Okay, so in this case here, we can see that our output is still blue when it should certainly be red. In fact, this is not red, but we'll get to that in a minute. Actually, turns out that it's green. Even more interesting. We'll get to that again. This is uh, this gets weirder. Okay, like this this gets a lot weirder than this. The only thing that is important right now is that I want you to count how many times the count variable is set. So we start with count here at zero. With our boolean here test set to true, we would expect the count variable to wind up being of the value two, and we would expect it to be set to one if ever we were following the else branch. If I output the count variable right here and you look here at the bottom the value is actually set to three so that is interesting so what is going on here right so pretty much the only explanation i can figure out here is that substance designer is calculating both the if and the else branch even though ultimately we are only outputting out the result of the if branch so again this value should be two but it is actually set to three right now and that is the same amount of times that we are incrementing this count variable by one. Now, where it gets even more interesting is that if I plug here our output value here back, now you'll recall in the example I showed you before that it was supposed to output blue if our if else statement was outputting else. Take a look at what is going on right here. So if I follow my else branch right now, what's happening down here is that I'm saying 
set the output value if the output x component is equal to 1, set the output value to green, and if therefore the output x component is set to 0 or is not equal to 1, then output blue. Now, why are we outputting green if, following again our graph, we have set that output value originally to be pure black and with an alpha of 0? Why is it that if we are setting here the output value to be completely black and within our else branch, we are saying output green only if the x component of that particular variable is equal to 1? What is going on here? Why is this green? This should be blue, right? So this gets even weirder, right? Well, the reason why this is happening, why this is outputting green and not blue, is because in my if branch of this particular graph, we are outputting red, or rather we are setting the output variable to red. But again, this if branch should only be calculated intuitively. Okay, this is intuitively, this is not what's going on, but intuitively we would expect this if branch to only be calculated if and only if this test is set to true. And once again, if I plug this count value that is right here, you can see that our count value at the bottom here is still set to 3, which means that we are basically calculating the code of both branches, even though we would expect Substance Designer to only go down one particular branch. This is important for a few different reasons. One is that maybe you want to turn off parts of your graph based off of giving the user a choice of turning something on or off. While that might not actually do much, if you're like, okay, I will have an expensive calculation that I will hide behind an if-else statement and will only be calculated if the user chooses to do so, well, that might not actually do much. So that's kind of important to know, I think. But second of all, this actually creates a lot of potential ill effects, you know? But if you are using set nodes somewhere, anywhere, behind an if-else statement, this becomes really weird, you know? It's like, how can you even trust your values that you are setting then? This isn't the end of it, okay? Um, I've actually noticed something else, and this is also why there's multiple versions of this graph that is right here. Let me switch over to uh, the first pixel processor that I have used, this one right here. So this was the first example that I have shown you, and uh, so once again, we output the output variable that is right here. If uh, our Boolean here is set to true, we set it to red. If it is false, we set it to blue, okay? so. That is pretty much the exact same thing. You take a look at this graph right here. Now this graph right here is in every way the same architecture, the exact same graph here. So what would be your guess here? What are we going to output? Are we going to output the value of 0 0.25? Or are we going to output the value of 0 0.75? If it behaves the exact same way as the graph that I have just shown you before, we should be outputting 0 0.75 if the bug is consistent but the bug is not consistent. And in this particular case, even though this graph is in every way the exact same graph, if I set this particular sequence here as the root, we are actually outputting now 0 0.25 and not 0 0.75. Okay, so why is this bug only happening in certain contexts, you might ask? Why is it happening here and it is not happening there, even though in every way these graphs are the same? There is a critical distinction between those two graphs, this graph outputs scalar values. Because we are propagating scalar values, so float 1s as opposed to float 4s, this bug does not happen, the graph behaves the way that we would expect it to behave. But because here we have vectors, the code of Substance Designer somehow treats this differently, the code is calculated differently, this is broken, this is not. And I actually don't think that it's related to the floats necessarily, as I have said. I think it has something to do with the fact that these are scalar values somehow. And uh, I've actually gone and I've done uh, quite a lot of uh, different permutations of this, as you can see. Um, so I really wanted to get to the bottom of this and really understand what was going on very intimately, right? So same thing as I have shown you before. In this case, there's no more colors. In this case, we're just uh, using here this set count value here. We're setting it, it to zero. Same thing here, we have our test, we have our if-else statement. Here we either increment count by 2 if it is the if branch, we increment it by 1 if it is the else branch. And as you can see, although I am outputting the count integer here out of the value processor, what is actually propagated through the sequence nodes 
is rather a float for because even though we are using set nodes here and get nodes we still have to propagate something through our sequences but this dummy value that i'm propagating even though it is not used anywhere it's not read anywhere it's not outputted out of the graph still makes it so so that our graph will be bugged and our count will be incremented three times as opposed to twice in this case here exact same graph but as you can see the dummy value i am propagating is a scalar float one as opposed to a vector float four and lo and behold the output of the value processor now is set to two so our test boolean here is still a variable nothing else has changed we're just propagating a different value through the uh the sequence chain and that changes everything even though that value is actually never used anywhere i've done tests as you can see with uh, float fours float threes float twos as you can see in every case this is still three in the case of a float two that is propagated still three in the case of an integer that is propagated integer one the graph is not bugged if it is an integer two that is propagated through the chain it's a question of whether the value is a scalar value or not. I haven't tested this with passing a Boolean through. I suspect it would behave in the exact same way. If my theory is correct, that would indeed be the case. So we can always try that and see what happens. And as we would suspect, in the case of a Boolean that's propagated through, our graph is not bugged. So once again, it's a scalar versus a vector issue, yada, yada, yada. If you are using if else statements, set nodes, so on and so forth, just be careful uh, because you might wind up having very obscure ill effects that are certainly not intended. So this file, of course, is um, available. There's going to be a link somewhere in the description of this video somewhere where you can actually grab it if you want to test it out for yourself and do whatever you want with it. And yes, so this concludes the PSA and hopefully that will save someone some time and some frustration. Thanks for watching this. See you next time.